Will the people of Gaza succeed? Will the people of Gaza repel their enemy? Will they be successful? Will they be victorious? It's a question everybody wants to ask. It's the elephant in the room. The answer, it may surprise some of you, is not a yes and it's not a no. The answer is they have already succeeded. The people of Gaza were already victorious. They have already triumphed. No amount of cannon fodder, no amount of depleted uranium, no amount of white phosphorus gas, no amount of bombs, all 12,000 tons of them, that is, that have been dropped upon Gaza, none of this can erase the fact that the matter is settled and the people of Gaza have already triumphed. Allah has already given them victory. But here is the problem. The problem is that we limit the understanding of victory to certain parameters. And when we don't see those parameters, we assume that Allah has abandoned us. Focus with me, please, because this is a haqida lesson. We limit sometimes our understanding of victory to the defeat of the enemy, to the dismantling of their occupation, to the protection of our lives and our children's lives, to the protection of assets, to the preservation of land. And so when we don't see these things happening, we assume Allah has abandoned us and He has not given us victory. Who told you and who said that victory is limited to these things? These are minorities. In the Islamic conceptualization of victory, victory is something much bigger than this. Victory is when you live upon Islam and you die upon Islam. Victory is when you are given shahada martyrdom by Allah. Victory is when you are content with the qadr, the decree of Allah. And that's why I say to you, the people of Gaza have already triumphed. They were already given victory. The matter is settled, done, dusted, and sorted. That can never be erased. Allow me to demonstrate. The people of Gaza have already triumphed because they have stood next to one another and they have not thrown each other under the bus. The people of Gaza, have you not noticed, have not leveled the finger of blame at each other and said, this is because of you, or this is because of you, or this is because of you. Whether old or young, whether educated or otherwise, they are all standing hand in hand in front of aggression, and no one blames his neighbor. And they are a unified, solid front, and they are paying the ultimate price for it, losing their families and children, and they are saying, we are unified. That is victory. You're not too sure about that? Look on the other side of the pond there in Tel Aviv. What do you see? You see disunity. You see them throwing their government under the bus when a petty worldly return he doesn't deliver to his, to his people. Whilst the people of Gaza are standing as a unified front, not blaming one another, supporting one another, aiding one another, reassuring one another. So therefore they have already triumphed. They have already triumphed because they met the decrees of Allah with contentment, with happiness. They have not rebelled against Allah. They have not questioned the decision of Allah to keep or to take away their children or homes. Wherever you look, you hear nothing but the hamd of Allah, the praise of Allah. Thanks to Allah. The glorification of Allah. Contentment with the decree of Allah. And therefore the people of Gaza have already triumphed. The people of Gaza have already triumphed and were given victory. You know why? Because it came at a time when the whole Palestinian cause was brushed under the carpet. Just a few weeks ago, nobody was talking about Palestine. Gaza was forgotten. And then Masjid al-Aqsa was being desecrated every other day. And the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ was being insulted in the bahat, in the spaces of Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa. And not a Muslim around the world was batting a light at it. No one knew about it. In fact, in our countries, in the Arab world, the manahij, the curriculums of our children were being adulterated, were being changed. The word Philistine and Aqsa was all being removed from the curriculums. Did you know this was happening? Certain verses of the Qur'an were now being omitted from the schools as well because they were seen to be a little bit extreme. All of a sudden, October happens, and guess what? Palestine is thrusted to the top of the agenda, globally. And now every king, every president, every prime minister, every PM, MP, every household, every individual is talking about Palestine is talking about Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa that is besieged and is talking about the oppressed people of Gaza 
and they're talking about the apartheid state of the so-called country called Israel. La ilaha illallah. So their blood has not gone in vain. And therefore we say Gaza has already triumphed. And we say that Gaza has already triumphed on the day that Allah Almighty chose from that small strip of land 10,000 martyrs for himself. La ilaha illallah. How much must Allah Jalla Jalaluhu love a people when he picks 10,000 martyrs to enter Jannah without any accountability, to experience no suffering in the grave, and all of the horrors that you read about on the Day of Judgment, they are spared of it as you and I perhaps stand for 50,000 years not knowing our fate in the scorching heat of a sun that is only a mile away from our heads, they are given a backdoor quick entrance into Jannah, la ilaha illallah, and he chose 10,000 of them within 20 or so days. How much must he love them? And that is why the Quran said, وَيَتَّخِذَ مِنْكُمْ شُهَدَاء He chooses from you martyrs. What's the implication of that? The implication is that when the bomb comes crashing down on the house and you see some people dead and others who made it alive, that's not an accident. It's not arbitrary. It's not random. When the bomb hits and they pull out uncle and they pull out auntie, but so-and-so died as a martyr and they, they choose this sibling and he's, he's well, but the other sibling died. None of that is accidental. Allah chose who will live and Allah chose the martyr he wants for himself. La ilaha illallah. He said, I choose from you martyrs. And that's why the Palestinians in Gaza, and we heard this, they said, we know that every martyr from every family who was taken when they were still alive, we recognize them as being the finest in the community. We knew when they were still alive that they were the best of us. It's not random, therefore, that Allah chooses them as martyrs. <laughs> By the way, <laughs> astaghfirullah wa atubu ilayh. As the Arab poet, he says, Ibn Nubatat al-Sa'di, he says, Man lam yamut bisayfi mata bighayrihi ta'addadat al-asbabu wal mawtu wahidu. He said, whoever doesn't die by the sword will die because of something else. He said, the causes of death are many, but the outcome of death is the same. Meaning, if you don't die for a noble cause, you don't die as a martyr, the outcome is still death. If you don't die today, and we grieve when we see them being pulled out of the rubble as martyrs, their battered and bruised bodies, children, men and women, we grieve, but we say, if they lived another day, would they not die tomorrow? And if they lived another year, would they not die the year after it? Death is the same. We are here in the life of this world, my brother, my sister, remember the bigger picture. We are passers by, we are visitors in this dunya. We are not residents here. We are passers by. We are here for a very short period of time in dunya to carry out a short exam, to see whether we will pass it or whether we will go to hell, whether we will glorify Allah or forget Him. And when we finish that short exam, we make our way to the next phase, and that's called eternity. So whoever does not die today as a martyr will die tomorrow anyway. So let's manage our grief. When we talk about one and a half million martyrs, in Algeria, killed at the hands of the French. That is what liberation costed them. 1.5 million martyrs. And I ask you the question, if they were not martyred back then, may Allah have mercy upon them. And the death of every Muslim is tragic. But if they had not died all those years ago, would they still be alive today? No. But they died as martyrs. Allah chose them as martyrs and they were given liberation as well. So manage your grief when you are seeing these scenes of martyrdom. And that is why I say to you, the people of Gaza have triumphed because Allah has chosen for them the ultimate success. And that is to die as a Muslim, as a monotheist, pleased with the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And on top of that, you are a martyr, a, shah, a shaheed. That's success, I'm sorry to say. That's how we understand success. And you remember the story of Haram ibn Milhan, one of the delegates whom the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sent to a place called Bi'ru Ma'una. A man by the nickname of Abu Bara requested that the Prophet Sallallahu sends a group of men who would teach them Islam and the Quran. And so the Messenger Alayhi Salatu sent 70 of the finest companions. They were called al khurra the reciters of the Quran, dedicated to the worship of Allah, people of remarkable purity. And when they came to teach them, they discovered that it was an ambush. And they encircled them. And they executed them one after the other. 
And one of those men who was executed, his name is Haram, son of Milhan. And a man came from behind him by the name of Jabbar ibn Salma with a spear and thrusted it through his back and the tip of the spear came out from the front. And when Haram, he saw what had happened to him, he'd been punctured. He put his hand on the wound and he covered his face with the blood to show Allah Almighty that this is for you. And then he said in a loud voice, Fuzdu wa Rabbil Kaaba. I swear by Allah, I have succeeded. I swear by Allah, I have triumphed. <coughs> and then he fell to his side and he died. Those words continued to haunt Jabbar ibn Salma ever since that day. What does he mean? What does he mean like he succeeded by the Lord of Allah, by Allah? How did he succeed? I just killed him. How was he victorious? What is he talking about? It was haunting him. And he continued to make his inquiries until he was told by some people that in the Islamic understanding of success, martyrdom is a great accomplishment. And so he made his way to the city of Medina and he met the Prophet Muhammad Pledged allegiance to him and he became a Muslim.